best practice in outpatient hysteroscopy. Green Top Guideline Number 59 March 2011 Background The procedure involves the use of miniaturized endoscopic equipment to directly visualize and examine the uterine cavity without the need for formal theater facilities or general or regional anesthesia. Outpatient hysteroscopy is indicated primarily in the assessment of women with abnormal uterine bleeding, but is also employed in the diagnostic workup of reproductive problems. More recently, advances in endoscopic technology and ancillary instrumentation have facilitated the development of operative hysteroscopic procedures in an outpatient setting with or without the use of local anesthesia. Common procedures include endometrial polypectomy, removal of small submucous fibroids, endometrial ablation, removal of lost intrauterine devices, and transcervical sterilization. Outpatient hysteroscopy, whether diagnostic or operative, is successful, safe, and well-tolerated. However, as with any procedure requiring instrumentation of the uterus, outpatient hysteroscopy can be associated with significant pain, anxiety, and embarrassment. This not only impacts upon women's satisfaction with their experience, but also limits the feasibility and possibly the safety, accuracy, and effectiveness of the procedure. To minimize pain and discomfort, variations in hysteroscopic equipment, adaptations to the technique, and use of pharmacological agents have been advocated. Service provision. What is the ideal setting for performing hysteroscopy? All gynecology units should provide a dedicated outpatient hysteroscopy service to aid management of women with abnormal uterine bleeding. There are clinical and economic benefits associated with this type of service. Outpatient hysteroscopy should be conducted outside of the formal operating theater setting in an appropriately sized, equipped, and staffed treatment room with adjoining, private changing facilities, and toilet. Clinical benefits of outpatient hysteroscopy. Rapid mobilization post-operatively, quicker recovery to pre-operative levels, and high and equivalent levels of women's satisfaction. Economic benefits of outpatient hysteroscopy. Less time of work, and reduce loss of income and reduce travel cost. What are the requirements for running an effective outpatient hysteroscopy service? Outpatient hysteroscopy should be performed in an appropriately sized and fully equipped treatment room. This may be a dedicated hysteroscopy suite or a multi-purpose facility. The healthcare professional should have the necessary skills and expertise to carry out hysteroscopy. There should be a nurse chaperone regardless of the gender of the clinician. Written patient information should be provided before the appointment and consent for the procedure should be taken. Outpatient hysteroscopy can be associated with substantial anxiety, so the treatment room should be private and patient-friendly with a separate and ideally adjoining changing area with a toilet. Adequate resuscitation facilities should be available as should a comfortable recovery area with refreshment-making facilities. Access to on-site or off-site decontamination facilities of an appropriate standard is necessary. Outpatient hysteroscopy should not be performed in a formal operating theater setting because this environment is likely to provoke anxiety in the women and negate the economic advantages 
associated with avoiding use of expensive operating theaters. Appropriate staffing levels are required. This will vary according to local circumstances and the type of service offered. When possible, one of the staff members should act as the woman's advocate during the procedure to provide reassurance, explanation, and support. Communication with the women in this way may help alleviate anxiety and divert their attention, thereby minimizing pain and embarrassment, the so-called vocal local. Adequate, clear, and simple written patient information should be provided with the appointment letter. Where simultaneous treatments are offered, it is important that this fact is reflected in the patient literature to facilitate informed choice. It is good clinical practice to obtain formal consent for outpatient hysteroscopy before the procedure. Analgesia. Do analgesics given before diagnostic hysteroscopy reduce the pain felt by women during the procedure? Routine use of opaque analgesia before outpatient hysteroscopy should be avoided as it may cause adverse effects. Women without contraindications should be advised to consider taking standard doses of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents or NSAIDs around one hour before their scheduled outpatient hysteroscopy appointment with the aim of reducing pain in the immediate post-operative period. Optimal timing depends upon the agent use on their half-life, rate of absorption, and etc., and the route of administration, but in general simple, non-opoid analgesics given orally, such as 1,000 mg of paracetamol or 400 mg of ibuprofen, should be taken around 1 hour before the scheduled appointment time. Thus, it is likely to be more practical to advise women to take simple analgesics in advance of their appointment rather than administer them in hospital. This approach is likely to be of more benefit in those units offering simultaneous hysteroscopic diagnosis and treatment, for example, the see and treat clinic, where the levels of discomfort experience are likely to be increased. Cervical preparation. The cervical preparation reduces uterine trauma, failure to access the uterine cavity, or pain associated with outpatient hysteroscopy. Routine cervical preparation before outpatient hysteroscopy should not be used in the absence of any evidence of benefit in terms of reduction of pain, rates of failure, or uterine trauma. Uterine trauma or the lacerations to the cervix or uterine perforation is recognized with blind and endoscopic instrumentation of the uterus with an estimated perforation incidence of 0.002 to 1.7%. The incidence of uterine trauma is low for diagnostic outpatient hysteroscopy performed with small diameter endoscope outer sheet diameter under 5.5 mm under direct vision. Factors associated with uterine trauma include the need for blind dilatation, cervical stenosis, such as atrophy, cervical surgery, previous cesarean section, and naliparity, a tortuous cervical canal, for example in association with fibroids, and a deviated uterine cavity, such as acute flexion, pelvic adhesions, and fibroids. Prostaglandines are associated with gastrointestinal adverse effects and are contraindicated in severe uncontrolled asthma, chronic adrenal failure, acute porphyria, renal or hepatic impairment, and breastfeeding. The main reason for failure to successfully perform an outpatient hysteroscopy is inability to access the uterine cavity as a result of cervical stenosis. This is most commonly encountered in the postmenopausal population. 
two randomized control trials have assessed the feasibility of outpatient hysteroscopy after vaginal prostaglandins, and a meta-analysis showed no reduction in failure rates. There is insufficient evidence to recommend zero-degree or four oblique optical lenses, for example, 12 degrees, 25 degrees, or 30 degrees offset lenses for routine outpatient hysteroscopy. Choice of hysteroscope should be left to the discretion of the operator.